Welcome back to mapping out your 2013 journey with the Word of God. I'm basically taking a chance this this morning here with uh, this equipment. It's working on and off, and I'm not exactly sure if it's going to carry me through for the next 10-15 minutes, but we'll go ahead and give it a go. If it works, praise God. If it does work, praise God anyway. Um, we're going to try to finish this uh, this short series on mapping out your 2013 journey with the Word of God. And basically, this is, you know, these messages, these 12, 13 messages are to help you um, for the next, you know, you can listen to one message each month. So this would be for the month of December. Um, this last one here on overseeing. Um, why don't we go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for uh, this Wednesday afternoon and Lord, we thank uh, just the, the difficult weekend that we've had in dealing with so many things. Um, but Lord, your word prevailed and uh, your scriptures came forth and defended your position in heaven and, and over the church and over the earth. And Lord, that's all that matter, matters, that thy will be done. And so even now, Lord God, may you uh, bless the recording of this message and uh, may it find approval with you in heaven. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I won't uh, keep you long, just a few minutes. I want to make sure you understand the points here of what um, our last uh, message entails. Uh, remember that uh, we've already, what we're trying to do here with mapping out your 2013 journey is we want to match our lives with the Word of God um, each day. Right, every day we want to match our Christian lives with God's Word, the Holy Scriptures. But with that comes doing the work of the ministry, which is the work of um, discipleship, making disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them and teaching them to observe um, all that Christ and the apostles and the prophets have commanded from the beginning um, until now. And so <clears throat> we went through by asking the question, who does God want me to blank? And we filled in the blank with, with 12 words. Who does God want me to lead as a disciple? Who does God want me to fellowship with as a disciple? Who does God want me to save into discipleship? Who does God want me to encourage as, as a disciple? Who, go, who does God want me to build up as a disciple? Who does God want me to rebuke as a disciple? Who does God want me to teach as a disciple? Who does God want me to help fight the good fight of faith? <clears throat> spiritual uh, fight, spiritual warfare as a disciple. Who does God want me to pray for as a disciple? Who does God want me to baptize? And that is water baptism or um, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As a disciple in our last uh, message was who does God want me to love as a disciple? Not sexual love, that because that's between a husband and a wife, but spiritual love. There's agape and phileo and we want to make sure that we don't cross over the boundaries and give the church the wrong kind of love which will offend the Lord, the Spirit, and um, the saints. And then finally we want to look at who does God want me to oversee? Who does God want me to oversee? And so, <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll go into the conclusion and um, of, our, of our series and um, I'm going to close this mapping out uh, sermon. Overseeing. There are several passages of, of the Bible that talks about the overseer. When you go into 1 Timothy 3.1, the Bible says, um, It is a good thing if a man aspires to the office of an overseer. An overseer um, must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, and so on and so forth. But the key here is found in 1 Timothy 3.1. It says, It is a trustworthy statement if any man aspires to the office of overseer. You go to First Peter five, one through five. First Peter five, one through five. And the overseer is the one that suffers most because he has to deal with the sins of the congregation, the sins of the nation, his own personal sins, and the sins of those who are blatantly disobedient against God and um, commit adultery in the church or against the church, commit fornication against the church, forces the church into all sorts of sexual immorality. And 
and destroys the church's stance before the nation and before God and brings down the name of Christ as a result of the sin that's in its heart. But the scripture says in um, 1 Peter 5, 1-5, Therefore I exhort you, I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight and not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, and so on and so forth. So another form of overseeing is shepherding. Um, that's another word that is used for it. You go to Acts 20, 28, and in Acts 20, 28, the scripture says, in my notes here, I wrote Acts 20, 48, but it's Acts 20, 28. The scripture says in Acts 20, 28, Uh, be, on, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Again, here Paul is encouraging the church of Ephesus right before leaving them and gathering the leaders together and he's encouraging them and he's telling them to, um, verse 28, to shepherd, um, to be on guard for themselves, for all the flock, um, which the Spirit of God has made them overseers. So a person cannot become an overseer unless the Spirit of God has chosen him to be an overseer, unless the Father and the Son has appointed them to that position. Remember Peter and uh, um, John 17, or John 21, 15 through 18, was chosen by God to shepherd, to be an overseer of the flock. So Paul encourages his, his leaving word as he encourages the church is to be on your guard uh, based on the, uh, the position that you've been given as a shepherd, at, as an overseer. Now here's some question for you. What does it mean to oversee? The word oversee uh, is defined as to supervise, um, like a person at work. You, know, you supervise a person at work. A person who uh, supervises others, um, especially over workers that are under him. Um, the Greek word for oversee or overseer is episkopos, and it means superintendent, sort of like a Christian officer in general charge of uh, of others in the church. That's what it means, literally um, or figuratively. It's also a, a a bishop. That's what an overseer is: a bishop, um, a guardian, uh, sort of like an early Christian officer. It was mentioned also in Philippians 1, 1, and uh, um, as I just shared with you in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, he's uh, not only the overseer, but also the qualifications for those who want to oversee the church. And so God permits it if it is a desire that comes out of your heart. Uh, some men are zealous for the word and for the work of the ministry. So not only do we want to be a godly man, but you also want to do the work of a godly man, which is to oversee the the flock, uh, and to shepherd them, and to watch out for them, and to pray for them, and to do all those other things that um, that we talked about on the list. So the second one, now you understand what it means to oversee, it's to shepherd, uh, to exercise authority, to supervise, to be a guardian. Uh, second question we have is, who does God want me to oversee? Um, the church of God, according to Acts 20, 28, the flock of God, First Peter 5, 1 through 5. Uh, his lambs, as he calls them in John 21, 6. His sheep, uh, John 21, 16 through 17. His disciples, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Uh, his children, the children of God, Romans 8, 15 through 17. So, you know, different names, but they're, they're the same people. Disciples are children of God. Children of God are also the flock of God. Flock of God are the disciples. Disciples are called the lambs and also called his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. Um, third question is, can a leader oversee a flock without a sheep pen? Can a leader oversee a flock of people, but without a sheep pen? In other words, without a, without a building. Remember, Jesus had um, multitudes follow him. And in that the multitude followed him, he didn't have a house to bring them in. He didn't have a campus to shepherd them. He didn't have this huge campus, you know, building that was already uh, built in those days. Remember, they met in synagogues as Jews, uh, and then they met in upper rooms, and then later on, as a church, they met in houses. 
um, in Ezekiel 34, 1 through 31, I'd go through the passage, but uh, it talks about shepherds, evil shepherds who forsake uh, the church on the hill and um, and do not take care of them and do not bring the, the basically the sheep are scattered all over the hills and um, and so you know God is angry with the shepherds of Israel and he calls them on it um, Ezekiel 34 1 through 31 you might want to read that and, and the scripture just uh, basically God promises Israel the flock and says you know I'm going to raise up a shepherd for you and I'm, I'm going to bring you back in and I'm going to restore you unto myself and I'm going to take you back as my flock. Why? Because these shepherds basically dropped the ball. And so God um, wants overseers, shepherds, who are going to supervise his people, but also uh, find a place to put them in. Remember, the twelve, he didn't leave them out in the cold. He brought them into an upper room and had supper with them. He also brought them into the synagogue for teaching and the upper room for fellowship. Um, later on, he met, you know, he went into different people's houses and um, there he fellowship with the disciples also. So it is better if, uh, if, a, if an overseer has, um, has a sheep pen um, in which he can supervise the flock of God and care for them and exercise oversight over them. Uh, if the sheep is wandering, it is um, easier for the wolf to go out there and to take him and to devour him and to kill him. Um, you know, take him in the wrong direction and take his life. Um, I don't think any leader, overseer, shepherd should dispose or um, neglect the members of the body of Christ or uh, you know, the sheep of, of God's pasture, the flock, the disciples, the children of God. No leader should just leave a brother out there by himself or a sister out there by herself uh, because it's his responsibility. You know, um, They have to give an account for the souls that God has brought into, into the body. Um, and so if he takes on a mantle as a, as a leader and he gets the right hand of fellowship and he's recognized by the church as, a, as an overseer, it is his responsibility to restore those who have fallen away and to bring them back. And just like the end of uh, chapter 34 says, you know, God basically brings them back, gathers his flock together again. Um, so no leader should dispose or neglect the members of the body of Christ in fear of Satan's desire to sift them like wheat. Remember, um, Judas was led astray by Satan away from the flock by entering his heart. Thomas denounced Christ um, and said, you know, if I don't see it with my own eyes, if I don't feel it, if I can't put my finger in there, I'm not believing in his resurrection. So they started to doubt. Peter, he says, no, I, I don't even know the yet. Three times. And so if the shepherd, the overseer, is not careful, and that's why Jesus says in Luke 22, 31, Satan desires to sift you as we have prayed for you. So it's better for a leader to have a sheep pen so that he can protect the sheep. Lastly, what is the difference between overseeing and shepherding? Basically, overseeing is supervising and, guard, and being a guardian. The shepherd, or shepherding is a person who lends and rears sheep, um, Rears the members of the of the of the body of Christ. Um, basically, a shepherd is a member of the clergy who provides spiritual care and guidance um, for a congregation. Uh, gives guidance to someone. Gives direction. Um, I spoke to a, a, a an overseer earlier today, and he prayed with me because of situations. My situation with uh, Grace Community Church in the Franklins. I needed that prayer. I needed that someone to pray over me and so that I'm not praying to the Lord by myself. And so just to be able to sit down with for 15 minutes was, thank you God, I needed that. And so do you. And if you're in full-time ministry, guess what you need to be and to also receive? Um, you need to be a, a, an overseer to those who are unbelievers. Um, and you need to bring them into the flock of God through your prayers and sometimes share the gospel with them and lay your hands on them and pray that God will give them hope. Spirit. Um, and if you're already in ministry, you need to fulfill your calling as an overseer and be faithful. So in conclusion, the role and position of an overseer or shepherd is given uh, and chosen by God, like Moses was chosen by God. He alone chooses those whom he wants to use as his shepherds, pastors, elders, overseers, leaders like Moses, jo uh, Joseph, Joshua, Peter, Paul, Timothy, 
you and I. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this hour, or th these few minutes. May you use this 15 minutes to um, bless the entire series. Um, and Lord, may you bless the next video, which concludes the entire thing. This will be in Jesus' name.